All right, everybody, thank you for coming. Can I ask you an honest question? Who here is totally not in the mood of learning anything right now? Just be honest. Be on, only two, three, on, there's only four honest people in the room. Five, a bunch of you guys are liars. Six, okay, come on guys, be honest. If you're not in the mood, because I am dedicating this year to you. And you'll see why this year is specifically dedicated to all the people who are not in the mood. All right? At the end of this year, you'll understand why. We're learning a sefer called Nesiva Shalom. And this is a piece that he has. It's actually tucked away in Shavuos, but it's a life-altering, cha life-changing speech concept. The introduction is as follows. Many times, Torah and mitzvahs is too hard for us to do. Do I get an amen? Amen. amen. True? True that? True that. Okay, many times we don't understand why we're doing things, and therefore we feel disconnected and even stupid doing them. True? Yes. True for the rabbi. How about any guys here? True. Let me hear you. True. True or full? Avada. Okay, many times we are not in the mood of davening Shabbos, learning and doing other mitzvahs. Ever happened to you guys, or is it just me? You're too quiet. True? True. Speak up. Speak up. Right? All right, how about this? Many times you want to sit and learn, but it comes so hard for us, too hard for us, and it seems even unfair. Other people don't have to work that hard. Okay? Many times we have no energy to fight the Sahara again and again and again. Many times we feel stupid and bad after we fail in fighting the Sahara. So if any of you have ever experienced any of these things that we just said, all right, then this is for you. All right? And hopefully, in a very short time from now, you're going to look at things completely different. The Nesiva Shalom starts with a very simple, fundamental principle in serving Hashem. Avodas Hashem is called serving Hashem. And once you got this principle down, he's going to apply it to all aspects of life, and everything's going to look different. Okay? This is what he says. And you all have it down on your pages, and if you can write down any words that you don't understand, so you'll remember what it means in English. This is a fundamental principle. This is huge, a huge fundamental principle in serving God. When a Jew fulfills a commandment. For instance, you put on your tzitzis, you put on your tefillin, right? Even if at that moment, he doesn't have the enlightenment of the mind. You know, real tzaddikim and uh, all of us, at some point, sometimes we're at the kaisel or sometimes it's Yom Kippur or whenever. There are times that our mind expands, that there's more to life than the stuff that we're into. And we have this ha'aras hadas, means enlightenment of the mind. Okay, it means like being able to feel connected to Hashem, which is... He's, he's very, very big. We're very, very small, right? So we need ha'aras hadas. Ata hireis aladas. Ki Hashem hu alikim. Ha'aras hadas means when our mind is open and enlightened to be able to exist more than a cow. Right? What is the life of a cow? We got grass. This is our life. And we're not that different. Just, you know, we have vapes. Okay, so we got electronic devices. We got maybe nicer clothing than cows do. But... The fact is that a lot of times our lives are just eating, sleeping, doing, you know, that kind of stuff. Thinking that there's a, a, another reason to live in a different realm than connecting, it takes a lot of work, and that's our job. But what happens if we don't have it? We're not feeling it. So he says, even if at that moment that you're putting on tefillin, right, you're going, I don't want to do this. I am not in the mood, right? I'm just totally not in the mood. Virikshe alev means feelings. So your mind is not interested, and your feelings, not interested. So you should know, Hari Etzim Kiyom HaMitzvah, just the essential fact that you are now fulfilling a commandment that you merited, Shazaycha L'Kayim Es Ratzon Hashem, that you merited to right now fulfill something called Ratzon Hashem. What does that mean? What's Ratzon Hashem? Will of God. God says, I want you to do it. Right? Just, just knowing that I am now going to fulfill the Ratzon Hashem, Tzarech Liyaset Tzlai HaTainag HaGadol B'Yaser Mikol HaTanugim. Now it sounds a little extreme, but he says that should be the greatest pleasure in the world. And hopefully in a couple of minutes we'll be able to start to feel it. Everything that we need to do to work on takes time. Anybody here 
do karate, martial arts? Let's say you want to be a black belt. Can you be a black belt tomorrow? No, you got to be a white belt. You got to be committed. You got to get hit. You got to fall. You got to get up. You get, and after a year, a yellow belt, and an orange belt, and a brown belt. So same thing with anything. We want to now become black belts in our mind. We want to be able to feel differently. We're doing stuff anyway, right? We want to feel connected to Hashem. We want to feel like Torah Mitzvah means something to us. And don't expect to all of a sudden walk out of here and be like, you know, it's a process. But he's saying to us that the fact that we can fulfill the Ratz and Hashem, the will of God, who is infinite, should be something that gives us tremendous pleasure. And that's the bracha. What do we say when we, make, when we do anything? We say, Baruch Atah Hashem, which is, bless you, Hashem. Not because he sneezed, but we say, bless you, Hashem. Elikeinu Melech Elam, our God, the master of the universe. But listen to the words. Asher Kedishanu b'mitzvah Vitzivanu. You made us holy with your mitzvahs. See, Hashem could have said to us to do anything. Why did he tell us to do stuff? We become holy when we do mitzvahs. Okay. Vitzivanu, and you commanded us, and then we fill in the blank, whatever it is. Right? Laniach tfilin, whatever it is. But the point is that we're thanking Hashem is that you commanded us. Vitzivanu. That's the name of this speech. You commanded us. God said, I would like you to do this and that. That's all it is. So it's different stuff that we do, but it's always thank you, Hashem. Blessed are you, Hashem, right? That you're the master of the universe and you made us holy with your commandments. He didn't just make commandments to make us crazy. He didn't just give us 600 and, uh, how many are there? Oh, 613. They didn't add any recently? 613 problems and annoyances. He gave us 613 ways to connect to God. By doing that, we connect to God. And we say, thank you, Hashem. Hashem Kedishanu, b'mitzvah What's the word? V'tzivanu. You commanded me. Haidaya, we're giving thanks al etzem haschia, on the actual merit, shu makayim as tzivoy Hashem yizbarach. What are you doing now when you put on tzivanu? What are you doing when you, when you sit in a sukkah? What are you doing when you shake the lulav? I'm doing what God commanded me to do. By doing what someone commands you to do, you become, that's how you become connected to them. Okay, until now, is everybody, did everybody get it? Are there any, anything that's, anything that's not clear? Don't be afraid to ask. Is it sim it's so simple, right? We're thanking Hashem with every mitzvah. You commanded me to do it. I'm thanking you and I'm doing it. Clear? Clear? Because this is, this is going to flip the switch. Okay, so the bracha that we make is that we are now going to do what Hashem wants us to do. So the less you actually enjoy doing it, the more you're actually doing it only for that specific reason, which is the purest form of serving God. Only if you didn't understand what I just said. So if I am enjoying myself, that's even better. That's amazing, but it could take away. If I'm doing it, you asked me to do this and I'm doing it, then the less of me that is involved in a way means why am I doing it? I'm not enjoying it. The guy next to me is shuckling, he's davening, he's enjoying it, I'm not in the mood. So why are you doing it? Because God said do it. So that's the most pure service to Hashem. Ube Emes, he says, think about it. Is there really any more Tainug, Gadol Mizer? Is there any more pleasure? Shabasa Vadam, that a regular human flesh and blood, Zaycha Lakayim Isratz and Hashem Isbarach, that we can merit to be Mekayim, the, the will of God, and to put on tzitzis or to put on tefillin. Halay Etzem Kiyim HaMitzvah, He has Chia Hagdoila Beyeser Avuroi. The fact that we can do something, now, of course, we need to believe in Hashem. And we need to believe in Hashem in a way that's real. But once we really believe that there's a God and he wants me, like a little ant, to do something, is there anything greater on this world that you can do? Let's bring it down with an example, all right? Who's your favorite pop singer? Okay, let's make it a Jewish singer. Benny Friedman. Benny Friedman? Who? 
the MBD. The only correct answer is MVD. You are now my favorite person. The King. Barry Weber. Lipa. Eitan Katz. Yishai Ribo. Okay. So you pick, you pick in your mind your favorite singer. It could be non Jewish if that helps for you, okay? I want you to imagine this moment. You get tickets. There's 50,000 people. 50,000 people. And somehow you end up right in front. Okay, 50,000 people at the concert, and you're in the front row. And suddenly, he or she, if, for those who said what you said, says, hey, dude, hey, come here, kid. Do me a favor, a huge favor. I need you to run to the control center. I want you to tell them to give you a quarter of an inch splitter to two double eighth inch inches. And you're like, what are you going to do? You're going to be like... Okay, right? Like your idol, your 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 this is whoever it is that you your god of people of humans that you would wait online for 12 hours. Who? Zusha. Zusha. Okay. Well. <laughs> all right. Whoever it is, it's all good, okay? And you can have a seat, make yourself at home. And he tells you, right? This guy tells you in front of 50,000 people, "Dude, I need a quarter of an inch splitter to What would you do? You would run like a crazy maniac. Okay, you'd be throwing people out of the aisles, you'd be getting, and you'd run all the way up to the control center, okay, and you'd be like, I need a quarter of an inch, of this, I need it. and they would give it to you, and you'd run back all the way, and you'd give it to him, even though you have no idea what the heck it is. You give it to him, he smiles at you, and he says, thanks so much, and you feel like a million bucks. You have no idea why he needs this. You don't know what it is. You don't understand it. You can't relate to it. You don't know what a quarter of an inch is. You just know that he needed something and he asked you to do it and you did it. Do you admit that you feel good? From a scale of one to 100, 100 being the highest, just out loud tell me, how good would you feel? 37. Anybody else? 95. Right, so you're at that concert, 50,000 people, and the guy says, get me at something, and you run and you get it. You're gonna feel good. So now let's think about it. This is exactly how we should feel, and we have to work on ourselves. This is how we should feel when Hashem, the master of the universe, asks us, puny human beings, to do something. If you can reach that feeling, then isn't it true? Isn't it true that God is more than 50,000 people in the world? And he says, I need you to do something. Now, I like the words that he says. You're not going to feel it right now. But we have to work on ourselves. And we can get there more and more to feel that. And the more that we feel that, the more pleasure we're going to feel when we're doing a mitzvah, even if we have no idea what we're doing, what it accomplishes, why it's necessary, I'm not in the mood, I did it. I feel good. Like it says from Marim Mikubrin Aleinu, that in every, every action that a Jew does, it should really, we should be feeling simcha, and this iris believe in our hearts, we should be full of joy and like in a, a spiritual awakening from that. Now, so many of us, we do things, we do mitzvahs anyway, but we don't feel this. Well, nobody taught us that the mitzvah should make us feel happy. We have to work on this. It's not going to be a magic pill. But before you do anything, before you make a shahako, before you make an ashriyatza, before you dava mincha, before you put on tefillin, before you do anything from now on, just start to make that muscle a little bit stronger and saying, right now I'm doing the will of Hashem. And if you think about it, we would, like I said, for a pop star, we would go crazy. We, we, if we can take a picture with somebody and we can post it, we feel so good. If we bring Hashem into our lives, we realize that He's up there, we're down here, and He wants us to do something, and I'm doing what He wants, our lives can be constantly filled with happiness and pleasure, that I'm doing something important. It's important, because it's important to Hashem. 
So you don't need to understand why, and you don't need to be in the mood. This is one of the biggest things, because you know, when, when you know what you're doing and why you're doing it, great. When you're in the mood, that's wonderful. But most of the time, or a lot of the time, or some of the time, we're not in the mood. And then we feel like, what was that? You know what that was? That was me doing what Hashem wanted me to do. And there's nothing greater in this world that I could possibly do. Make sense? Now we're going to apply it. So before you do any Avaidus Hashem, think, I'm going to do this because Hashem wants me to. Now we're going to apply this simple concept. I don't think that this is a concept that is crazy hard to understand. Everybody gets it. We're going to apply it now to all aspects of Yiddishkeit. Number one, when we don't know or understand. Therefore, when a Jew is going to be Mekayim a Mitzvah, and he says, Asher Kedishonu B'Mitzvah because you, com you, com you made me holy with your mitzvahs, even if I don't know and I don't understand anything. I don't know why this does anything important for the world, or for me, or for you, Hashem, and I don't understand. But we do believe I do believe that I'm doing something that I don't understand and everybody can, when you go into business in the beginning, you're going to understand very little. But you're going to trust that when the guy tells you to do this and this and this on the, on the, the program or the app, it's doing something important. We believe that Hashem put in holiness into us doing mitzvahs. Al yidei ha'kavana hazois Listen to what he says, Magia l'shevish mitzvah Through this kavana, we reach the root of the mitzvah. What is the kavana again? Anybody want to tell me? What is this kavana that we're supposed to be thinking that brings us to the root of the mitzvah that you're doing? Somebody tell me? You raised your hand before. Can you tell me? Okay, next. Anybody? You want to tell me? He just said, what is it? He says, when we do X, Y, Z, when we do this thing, A, B, C, we reach the root of the mitzvah. What is that thing? Close. He said before, last couple minutes, he was explaining a concept, and he says, therefore, when, when, do me a favor, don't shake your leg as it shakes the camera. When you do this thing, even though you don't know what you're doing, you don't understand what you're doing. You reach the source, the root of the mitzvah. What is that thing? No, no, he said it. Let's go back. Okay. He said before that he said before that when we do a mitzvah, we don't need to understand why and we don't need to be in the mood. I'm doing what was the word? Vitzivanu. I am now doing this thing because God asked me to do it. When you have that in mind, then you reach the source of the mitzvah. Why do you put on tefillin? Because God said so. Very simple. So when you're putting on tefillin, why are you putting on tefillin? Because God said so. So but do you understand why you wrap it and all of that? You can learn about it and you can figure it out, but you don't need to. I'm doing this because God said so. And when you do that, you reach the shayrish of the mitzvah, the source of being Mekayim Ratzon Hashem. So there's nobody here that cannot do this. We think like, oh, you got to be like this holy rabbi who knows all of the, the you know, great details and all of everything. And you got to be in the mood, right? Sometimes I'm in the mood and sometimes I'm not in the mood. When you're not in the mood, you're even more reaching the shayush of the mitzvah. Because the whole reason I'm doing this is vitzi vanu. Good. Why? Because the root of the mitzvah is just do it. Just do it because Hashem wants you to. Huh? Our new logo for Judaism. Just do it. But I, I'm not in the mood. Just do it. But I don't feel it. Just do it. But it's not the old way like when we were kids. Just do it. I don't care if you're not in the mood. It's, no, no. That's what, that's the, the shayrish of the mitzvah. Vitzivanu. God asked me to do it. I'm going to do it. Uvelayzeh. 
And if you're not doing it because God told you to do it, on the other hand, a person can can have can sit there for an hour and a half and get really connected, and he can have tremendous kavana, and he's thinking about all the reasons, and he's really holy. But if he forgets that I'm doing this, he forgets that piece that I'm doing this because God told me to do it, then it's nothing. Anything that you want to learn about why we do stuff, how we do stuff, you're in the mood, you feel good about it, that's on top of this. But this is the foundation. Va'kavana hazais. This kavana. What's kavana in English? Intention. Thank you. This intention, which is what? L'kayim esrats and Hashem. To fulfill the will of God. He iker ha'avoda is the main service to Hashem. Vahatainuk shel Yehudi be'etzim ki mitzvah and the pleasure and enjoyment that a Jew has in actually just doing the job, just do it. She'aisa mitzidai that I'm doing from my part as Ratzon Hashem, the will of God. Al piyakavana hal yaina how you do alayusbarach, according to whatever reason that he has. Uklum yashtainuk niflumizah and is there really anything that could be more pleasurable? What is an example of a mitzvah that you really don't understand why you need to do it? Keeping Shabbos. Keeping Shabbos. Anybody else? A mitzvah that you really, I just don't know why I do, why, why do I gotta do this. What? Milk and meat. Nagel Vassar, why do I need to do it, okay? A bris, why do I need to do it? You don't have to do it every day, it's not like tefillin. I just want to clarify that, okay? For me, it's Lulav and Ezrig. For me, I got to be honest with you, I, I'm okay putting on tefillin even though it looks like, a, like I'm taking my blood pressure, you know, even in an airport. For me, every year until I learned this piece, I really felt a little bit silly. Why am, I, I don't, what is this? What am I doing? What's this funny lemon and this long thing that we pay like a thousand times the price of a lemon and a, and, a, and a stick? We pay like hundreds of dollars for this, right? Dude, listen, this is good. And I'm going like this and I'm shaking, right? I'm in the sukkah, I'm doing it. And I close it up and I, and I really do it with a lot of confidence and a lot of intention, kavana, right? And then I, I really feel a little bit silly because like I really, I just, I don't know what, it, I don't know. So to me, out of all the mitzvahs, right? It makes me feel silly. And then I learned this, and I realized, hey, uh, you know why I'm doing this? Because God said, I want you to do this. So, hey, I'm totally fine. You want me to jump up and down? God, I'll jump up and down. You want me to walk around with a cherry on my nose? I'll walk around with a cherry on my nose. I don't have to feel silly because I don't understand it. We should learn. Tamei and Hagim, it explains it. We should learn. I even wrote a book, by the way, about what Shabbos is really all about. It's a great thing to learn. We can learn why we wash Negev Aser. We should. We have to. But the shayrish of the mitzvah, the root of the mitzvah is, you know why I'm so happy to now, instead of feeling a little bit foolish, taking this thing? Because now I, me, little ant, right, is doing what Hashem asked me to do. So the fact that I don't understand it means I'm doing it purely because he asked me to do. That is the most pure mitzvah in the world. And if you learn anything about reasons, it has to be on top of that, not instead of that. Make sense? Anybody else want to think of any, any mitzvahs that make you feel foolish or that you like, like, why am I doing this? I think this is the best one, right? Everybody put, you know, at some point you shake the t whatever, and you're like, okay, I just did something. I don't know what I did. Is this like connected to, is there Wi-Fi? What's in there? Okay, so when you do a mitzvah and you have no idea what it means and why you need to do it, you should be happy because, why? You are achieving the highest level of Avedis Hashem. Guys, we're with me, are, with me on this? He's gone. That's why I don't use the recliner. That's why I was on the side. God, no, leave him alone. Let him, uh, don't, don't. He's in a good place right now, okay? He's achieving the highest level of something else. All right. Okay. Who said something about Nagelwasser? All right. So, guys, I want you to read this, the yellow with me. When you do a mitzvah and you have no idea what it means and why you need to do it, B, 
be happy because, let's say this all together, you are achieving highest level of Avedis Hashem. You guys are a terrible crowd. All right, we're going to try this again. Be happy because... There is a certain purity when someone, when you, if you ever see a little kid and they just listen to you and they don't understand, that's, that's what Hashem wants from us. Now, if we understand stuff and we, we talk about Torah, we're going to get to Torah in a minute. He's a masmid, so he's worried about his six hours of Ritzifus that he's learning in a row. He's like, don't take that away from me. All right, we're going to get to that. And it's a very good question. He's flipping things. He, what's your name? Mayor. Mayor. So what you realize that the Nesiva Shalom is doing is he just flipped around everything. So it's, it's like, whoa, right? It's like, oh, so you mean the less I'm in the mood, the more schar I get. So why should I ever be in the mood, okay? So now we're going to balance that out. But until now, we thought, if I'm not in the mood, like, like whoa, what am I doing? Now we realize there's something very special when you're not in the mood. But that's not our goal. Our goal in life is not to not be in the mood and not understand why we're doing stuff. He's just bringing out a very simple point, and he's going to attach it to a lot of different stuff in your life. So when you're going to be up, 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 you're going to be fine. But when you're feeling down, 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 now you're going to be fine. When your Rosh Hashiva asks you to do something, you're happy to do it? Right. If you understand what it is, you're even happier. It's true. You help him, you're there for him. But if you don't understand, you don't feel like an idiot because the bottom line is I'm doing what he needed me to do. And now we're going to apply this, guys. We're going to go a little faster now because I'm getting a little tired. I'm, I'm kidding, but you are. Anyway, so we're going to apply this to different things, okay? Davening, Shabbos, Torah, and whatever, and then fighting the Eight Sahara, and look what happens to our entire life, how everything can look differently. The Chen Kasha Nigesh comes to davening. Do we daven Mincha yet today, guys? No. We're going to daven here? Yes. Beautiful. We have a shul over here. Well, we're going to go daven, and some people are going to be in the mood. Sometimes you're in the mood. But what if you're not in the mood? Remember these two things. Even if you're not open in your mind, your mind is thinking about either nothing, hopefully, that's better than the other stuff, negative stuff, right, that your mind is floating to. And I'm not feeling in my heart, I really want to connect to you, God. Oh, God. And actually, if you think about it, sometimes people are in a bad place, and you see how they just their, their heart opens up, and they're just like, Hashem, please help. We shouldn't have to wait for something bad, but we should, we should strive for that. But let's say we don't have that. So you should right then, instead of being depressed and be like, dude, I am so not in the mood of this, look what he says. You should be totally happy. And he's be like, why are you so happy? I merited, I'm going to merit now saying, Baruch Ata Hashem. Like, the Baldevay Shmuel Zchusiyog and Elenu said, "Tzahala Verina Lezecha Machusoi." Is Yehudi a Jew? Tzarech liyais Malei Simcha v'Tzahala Mimasha Zecha Lahaski Rishem Hashem. We go ahead. Is your your hand up for a question? We should be so happy that we just get to say Yud Kei Vav Kei. So we believe, right? So we we understand that there's a God, right? So if we, don't under, if we don't think there's a God, this is not going to pertain right now. This is different speech. Is there a God? If there's a God and he created us, then what he's bringing out is that we should be really happy to do his will. Because if I'd be happy to do my Rosh Hashiva's will, my friend's will, somebody I like, my boss, okay? And my, like we said before, the pop star. And, and we really would be happy. Is there someone in this world that you would be so happy to get a chance to take a picture with them? and you would put it on TikTok, Instagram, whatever you're doing? Is there anybody in this world that would make you happy to be with? It would be like, wow, and all your friends would be like, wow. So he's saying, let's give God at least that amount of credit. Right, because if I could take a selfie with Hashem, I, I would definitely put that on Instagram, right? I'd be like, I don't know, I don't know what if I would be, I, I don't know exactly what pose with God. I would I'd probably, be more, probably be more like, or, I don't know, but it would be some kind of a pose, right? So he's saying that you're not in the mood of doing this mitzvah, right? Think. But God asked me to do it. And like I said before, white belt, yellow belt, start, start developing this feeling. I am now able to do the will of Hashem. Baruch Atah Hashem, which we're all going to say, we say it by every bracha, should 
fill us up with great simcha, that us puny little humans can merit to say the name of God, Melech Machim Lacham HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Is it going to right now? No, probably not. But we have to work on ourselves. He's giving us a concept to work on. So when you're really not in the mood of davening, just think how lucky you are to be allowed to speak to Hashem and you are achieving the highest level of Avedis Hashem. Next thing, you spoke about Shabbos. Same thing when Shabbos comes. Shabbos is supposed to be an amazing thing. A little plug for my book. I don't make money on it, but just letting you know, CPR, resuscitation for your soul. If we understood what Shabbos is, we'd be dying for Shabbos. But sometimes Shabbos comes. Our mind and our heart are, you know what farshtopt means? Closed. And it's like, I, I know I'm supposed to be looking forward to this one day of soul with Hashem connecting but we all have this, that sometimes I'm not in the mood. So then I should just think in the depths of my heart, I'm zaycha to Shabbos Kaddish. Beini uveim b'nei Yisrael oisi la'ilam. It's a day that Hashem said, it's between me and you, and it's a connection, and ois means a sign between us. And the fact that right now I'm not in the mood, but I am getting this gift. Yismechu v'malchus chashem Shabbos, he says that we should be happy with the fact that we are Shemri Shabbos, that we keep Shabbos, Kipshutai, that means that I'm going to keep the rules of Shabbos. Why am I not using my phone on Shabbos? I want to. I'm not in the mood of this. Why am I doing this? Why am I not doing this? He says, the simple meaning, God asked you. And that should give you a certain inner happiness and a feeling of now I am lucky that instead of being like the rest of the world, God asked me to do something and I'm going to do it, and that, even if I'm not in the mood, that gives me pleasure and enjoyment. Still don't want anything to do with God. That's a different speech. So when you're not in the mood of Shabbos, just realize that if you were chosen to spend the day with Hashem, and you, then you are achieving the highest level of Hashem. Learning Torah, you mentioned it before. Listen to what he says. The same thing is with learning Torah. The main thing is the ah. Uh, what is that word? No, close. What is that word? Amala shel Torah. What does that mean? Toil. The main thing about Torah is the toil. Not how much, not the toil, how hard you work. Imagine everybody here is going to work for an hour. I have, a, I have a company down the block. You're all going to go work for an hour. When you leave, one of you gets a dollar. The other of you gets $1,000 for the hour. Everybody gets a different paycheck. Because for you, it was easy. So you get a dollar. For someone else, it was really super hard, and they pushed themselves. We get paid. The schar for Torah comes from the amount of toil, how hard it is. You come to a shir, you listen to it, very nice. You got to push yourself to the next level if it's easy. But if it's hard for you, and it's hard for you to integrate, it's hard for you to make it a part of you, it's hard for you to understand the words, it's hard for you to remember, it's hard for you to even want to be there, you get paid more. He says, Ha'am the nation that was going in the darkness, they saw a great light. That is the Ar Haganos that Hashem put a special light that is reserved for the Amali Torah, those who toil in Torah. And only on them, only they get the light. That's why the tzaddikim, that's easy for them to learn, but it was hard for them to learn 20 hours a day. It's on the push, it's on the extra, it's on the toil. So if you're sitting and you don't understand, you feel like, I'm such an idiot, I don't even like this. I mean, you should know that Hashem appreciates you even more and you get paid even more. What's your question? No. Oh, in the world above? For sure. But the one who has things easier has to do much more to reach that place where he's toiling. The other person who it's really, really hard, right, gets much more schar because every little thing he does is much, much bigger. Let's say you go to the gym. You see one guy there. He's healthy. He's amazing. He's strong. He's got these huge muscles, right? And he's going to lift 100 pounds. He's going to do it 100 times. Somebody else broke his arm, comes in, and, and for him, to, he's, in, he's in like rehab, right? He's doing um, physical therapy. For him, he's working so hard just for that one a half a pound, right? Okay, so Hashem knows how much we're, we're working to get ourselves to that place, 
to sit there, to, to be there when we don't want to be there, to listen when we don't want to listen, to try to understand, we get paid for toil. He's saying the revelation of the Arhaganos, which is the special light, is not for reaching the depths of Tyra or finishing Shas or um, anything else. It's Eina Avur Masha Hegia, Shegiu Le Amko Satera, Ulu Tainuk Shal Musika Sareva Satera, or appreciating the sweetness of Tyra. Elorak Avur Hayegia Batera. It comes from the Aragonas, the, the that special reward comes from the Yigia, which means the toil, the work. which you feel like you're going in darkness. I don't want to be here. I don't enjoy this. I don't understand this. You feel like you're walking in the dark. In that schar that you continue walking in the dark, that's what the Pasuk says, Ro Argadal, you get a tremendous, tremendous reward, which is the Aragonas. So when you're struggling to learn, Struggling to understand, you should know this is the highest level that a person can achieve. Now, this one is very special. He's going to apply the same principle to fighting the Sahara. The same thing is with Sur Meira. The same thing is with fighting. Anybody here have Sahara? Okay, not everybody. Nice. Okay. Even when you're in the middle of a tremendous war with Yetzirah, Yetzirah is, is on you. He wants you to sin. And it's a really tough battle. And from a tough battle, says the Nesiv Shalom, when you are in a tough war, you're going to leave bruised. You're going you're gonna to get beat up. Nobody goes into battle, into a serious battle, and is unscathed and untouched. So if a person is faced with a Yetzirah that's really strong, and you're all alone, nobody sees this, nobody knows about this. You're in a tough battle with the Yetzirah. He's trying to get you to do something that you know is wrong. So you're in a tough battle and you're going to get hit. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get bruised. He says, still, listen to this, guys. You should be completely satisfied. You should be completely satisfied. That you were Zaycha, that you merited to fight, to try to fulfill the Ratzon of God. That we are part of the chosen people. That we were chosen to go ahead and to fulfill his Ratzon. This is from the fundamental principles of Avaydis Hashem. So I'm going to give you an example, right? How many billions of people are there in the world? Anybody know? Eight billion? How many people care about Hashem who gave us the Torah and he says, don't do this, don't do that? Let's say in America, how many people are even caring about these things that we don't, what? Three million, Three million people in America. How many people care about what God said? We're so small. You're here because you care that God said something. You're trying to fight the good fight. Most people are even glorifying sin. They're saying it's healthy, it's good for you, go out and sin, that old stuff doesn't count. And we're trying to fight. You think Hashem doesn't appreciate that? So here's an example. Imagine that you see me. Let's pick your rabbi, Rabbi Scott. What do they call you? Or Shiva. Rabbi Friedman. You see Rabbi Friedman, he comes out of a train station. You guys see there's four guys around him and they're taking punches, they're beating him up, they have him on the floor, they're kicking on him. They're kicking him. You see, everybody's leaving the train station, they're staying away, right? They're walking, they don't want to get involved, and they're leaving. You pull up in your car, what do you do? Right? It's one of you. One of you. You, you, get, you get out of that car and you're now on the way in slow motion. In slow motion, while you're running to go to help Rabbi Freeman, I'm going to talk to you. Dude, you can't beat them. Doesn't matter? Why? Because he's my rabbi, I got to help him. Because he's rabbi, got to help him. But dude, you're going to get beat up. You're not going to win this fight. Okay? So you jump in there. You jump in there to help Rabbi Freeman. Okay? And what happens? You get beat up. And you get bruised. How will Rabbi Friedman feel about what you did for him? <laughs> he loves you, so he says terrible. How much appreciation, right? Respect. 
So listen to what the Nesiva Shalom is saying. Hashem told us to do certain things, and He told us don't do certain things. And millions of people don't care. They just don't care. And we're jumping in the fray. We're jumping in the fight, and we lose. But be proud that you're trying, because at least you care to try to fulfill the will of Hashem. So when you try to fight the Sahara and you lose, how do you usually feel? Like a loser. Again, I lost. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. He says, no. Feel extremely happy. Mu'usha kulai. Why? You even tried to fight. Because why are you fighting? Because you care. Why do you care? Because you want to do the right thing for Hashem. Conclusion. Apia Amar, according to what we just learned. We're done. Okay? You should know in those times that you're closed up. You can't open your mind. You can't feel. You can't open your, your feelings, your emotions. And you think to yourself, What kind of a face does my Avaidas Hashem have? That mitzvah? Did you daven? I don't even remember. Well, God can't appreciate that. Did you put on tefillin? I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. I did it on, off, wax on, wax off. I don't even know. And you think to yourself, it has no value, right? There's no value that I put on tefillin. There's no value that I kept Shabbos when I wasn't in the mood, or I tried to minimize Chol Shabbos, or I tried, I, I'm working, I'm fighting, I'm doing what I can. Who cares? I'm a loser. He says, Machshava zu he toys me kara. That thinking is completely wrong baseless is completely wrong from the outset. That's not the way our religion works. So I want you to internalize that. By Kabbal Satayra, what is Nasa before Nishma? You know what it means? It means even before I understand. I didn't hear why and where and what. I heard Nasa, do and don't do, right? That is why I'm a Jew. I work for, it's like being in the army. Your general says, go, you go. You don't understand it, you don't understand it. You're not in the mood, you're not in the mood. You are, you're a good soldier. I'm going to do it even before I feel and understand and want. That is the tachlus, ratzen Hashem, the hatainuk hagadol b'yaser. That's the ultimate ratzen Hashem. Just do it. And that is the greatest feeling that we have. So example. Your boss asks you to shovel his driveway. And as a token of appreciation, he pays you $200. Nice, boss? All good. But imagine that you aren't feeling well or you're really not in the mood. Let's say you, your back hurts. You have a headache. You have fever. You're not feeling well. You already shoveled someone else's driveway. Whatever it is, you are not excited to do this for him. But you do it anyway. Why? Because you want to please him. So then... If he finds that out, that you weren't in the mood, or you weren't feeling well, and you didn't want to do it, you weren't excited to do it for exercise or a good feeling, right? And you did it anyway, then he would have even more appreciation for your dedication to him, and then he will pay you $400. So when you are not in the mood, or you don't understand what you're doing or why, so much of our lives, why am I doing this with the lulav? Why am I doing this? Oh, I'm not in the mood. Oh, yeah, I don't want to dive in. So instead of real feeling afterwards, or feeling then, oh, this is going to be meaningless. No, no, no. Get excited. Say, you know what? Now I'm doing the shayush of the mitzvah. Remember that doing the ratzen Hashem, doing the will of God, specifically when you're not in the mood, is the ultimate sacrifice. It proves that I'm doing this because you asked me to do it. Without any, any negias, I'm not enjoying it. It doesn't feel good. I'm not benefiting from it in my psyche or in any way. And that is the highest level of Avedis Hashem. This does not mean that we shouldn't try to be in the mood. Because when we do this because Hashem asked me to do it, and then I add on Simcha, and then I am in the mood, of course we build on top of that. But this takes thousands of events in our lives that we felt is meaningless, and and no, 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 it changes it completely. All those is with tremendous meaning, and maybe in a way even more pure. 
Now, doing a mitzvah b'simcha, you should know, I would say the schar, Hashem gives you a tip. You did it happily, 5%. No, it's brought down 1,000 times the schar. So, of course, to do a mitzvah, you should do it b'simcha. But even in trying to do it b'simcha, it's very hard when you don't know why you're doing this. You didn't learn Kabbalah. You don't understand why, what this is. You should learn it. And you should raise your awareness. We're not saying not to. But even when you did and you're not in the mood or you wouldn't choose to do it now or you don't because you didn't learn it yet, right? The bottom line is be besimcha. Because, but how can I be happy? I don't know what I'm doing or I'm not in the mood. But hey, I just reached the ultimate purity of being an Eved Hashem. I just did something so pure that shows my love for Hashem. You want me to shovel the snow? I'm going to shovel the snow. You want me to put on tefillin? Yes, again, we're not against being in the mood, but when you're not in the mood, all those times, you smile and you do it besimcha, with happiness, because you say, now I'm going to just do it just because, vitzivanu. And you makayim the mitzvah on the highest level. And you go into Shabbos, of course, please, please read CPR. Understand what Shabbos is. CPR, resuscitation for your soul, explains what Shabbos is that we don't, most people don't know what Shabbos is. How could you be a from Yid and you don't know what Shabbos is? Hashem rested, so we rest. No. It's a day of rest. No. It, it's such an avoid in Shabbos. so important to keep us connected and to, to revive us. You have to read the book. And it's very pleasurable. It's very exciting because it's interesting to read. It's pictures and it's for teens and young adults and adults and grandparents and great-grandparents. Because the Teichen is very deep. Nasi Shalom and Midrashim, the actual, you know, stuff, but it's presented in a very easy way. We're not saying not to. Jump at the Shabbos happy. But when you're not, for whatever reason, then you could be happy because you just did something which is really amazing and, you've, and, and, and a special type of purity. So what I love about this Nasi Shalom piece, obviously, is that it takes all of the times that we're feeling great and we're doing things and we understand, I'm not worried about you then. I'm not worried, I'm not worried about me then. But it takes all the rest of them, all the rest of the stuff. And it allows us to serve Hashem b'simcha rabba with tremendous happiness and joy and pleasure when I'm not understanding or I'm not in the mood because I realize I'm accomplishing something so great and I'm going to get paid and rewarded for something so great now. And that gives you a happiness. So even that guy who's not feeling well, but he knows that his boss is going to appreciate him that he shoveled the snow and he's even going to get rewarded probably more Maybe last time also was 400. Maybe it's 4,000 instead of 200 because his boss appreciates him so much. That's what you should be thinking. And how can that not make you happy? That you zaycha to fulfill, you merited to fulfill the ruts in Hashem, the will of Hashem, and you're doing it only because Hashem asked you to, not even because you enjoy it. And, if, and that should make you happy. And now if you're going to start learning the reasons or to enjoy it, don't take away that feeling that I'm doing it only for Hashem. Add to it all the other stuff. Because if you do all the other stuff and you're very deep and you're very spiritual and you know all the reasons and you do all the, the time uh, and you learn time and hug him, but you forget that I'm doing it at the end of the day because God commanded me, so then you're missing the main thing and, and you, you don't get the schar that you would get. So add on to it if you want to. But all those other times, now we can go ahead and we can realize how happy we should be even when we fight the Yitzhahara and we lose. Because why am I fighting? Why do I feel bad? Who feels bad? The fact that you feel bad for your sins should bring you such simcha. Say, how many people in this world feel bad about Averis? How many people are trying not to sin? So don't let the Yitzhahara tell you, oh, you lost, and now it's nothing. Eh, what, kind of, what kind of Jew are you? I'm a Jew that keeps on trying to do the Ratzon Hashem. I'm fighting, I care. Or at least if I give in to the Yitzhahara, it bothers me. That's pretty good these days. It bothers me. I want to be better. I'm going to try to be better. Hashem should help us that we should be zaycha to realize all the mitzvahs. We're all Malayim mitzvahs kirimon. We're doing mitzvahs anyway. So let's realize that all those mitzvahs we should do besimcha. And again, to recognize I'm doing it because Hashem asked me. For some reason, I'm so lucky. Hashem said, I want you to put on tefillin. Really, me? Not, not him? No, not that. And he's not Jewish. I want you to put on tefillin. I want you to keep Shabbos. I want you to spend the day of Shabbos with me. I want you to shake the lulav. I want you to eat matzah. I'm not in the mood of matzah. But Hashem, 
right, who I look up to so much, wants me to do something, that makes me happy. We have to focus on this before we do every mitzvah and say, I'm doing it. Hashem made us holy with his commandments. And he commanded me. He wants me to do this for him. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to do your, your will, Hashem. And that will uplift all those dark things that we thought are meaningless and not so full of meaning. We'll lift up all of our vices, Hashem. By, the, by next year, you'll look back, you'll be so happy because you'll you realize I'm either in it and when I'm not in it, I'm in it for being not in it. And that's Nasev and Nishma. That's Nasev and Nishma. We are going to do your will. Even before Nishma, even before I understand their hair, even before I hear it and internalize it and understand what I'm doing. Hashem should help us all be Mekayim, all the mitzvahs in the highest level, to be Zaycha, to be Erlich Yidin, doing the Ratz and Hashem, and to focus on the fact we're doing it because why? Vitzi Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.